Thanks for stopping by my channel. Today we're gonna to make a two-sided flat transition that holds a case coil. And I'm also gonna show you some tips and tricks for measuring furnaces. So we're gonna make a two-sided flat transition today that's gonna to hold a case coil. But I wanted to show you a few tips and tricks for doing transitions on low boy oil, high boy oil, or gas. When you're doing a low boy oil, most of the time you will have a two inch space between the two transitions. But every once in a while you'll get one that's one inch. If you run across this, don't bother trying to make a transition to go to here. Just bring the whole thing down an inch bigger. You're not gonna hurt yourself by having this at one inch and going over. It'll keep your spacing and you won't have to go crazy and make a three-sided transition on the job. As with gas, when you're making transitions, always try and keep a flat side for your, for your drains, for your condensate pumps, for anything you can. Now, when we get into gas and oil high boys, it's always good to keep a flat side for your return. But in the event you end up with something crazy, like you have a return air duct coming down that's right up against your unit, you could always move this furnace over and use your transition difference to add a filter to the side. You shouldn't be letting your customers go into a unit to change a filter. I see it all the time. It's disgusting. It doesn't work right. So if you can, always give yourself some space, even if you have to do it in the transition. Now, I always try and keep at least two flat sides on everything. It makes your life a little easier. With the new furnaces and with the new gas furnaces in the case coils, everybody's pretty much got the same measurements now. Back in the day, a majority of the units were between 40 and 43, but now they seem to be coming through about 33, 34 inches. So you're always going to have a lot of room to make a transition. So I always try and stay flat to one side and flat to the back, depending on what I have. Every job is different. You may not always get it that way. So what we're going to do here today is we're going to make this fitting. I have a job. I have a case coil there that's fairly new. I have an older gas furnace there. And of course my new one is 33. So we're gonna make a transition to go between the case coil and the furnace, but we're gonna make this cradle here to hold that coil. Now, a lot of times I see people where they come in and they just make a transition come in an inch and that's all they do. And then they tape it on there. This is a much better way. And I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make one of our flat sides. I'm gonna make the flat left first. So we're going to scribe one inch along the bottom. We're going to scribe an inch along the back. That's going to be our Pittsburgh. So my fitting is four inches tall, but to make the cradle, I need three. And then I need another inch for my hem flange. So I need eight inches of material to make my connections. For our cradle, we're going to scribe three. And we'll start the flat back also. inch on the bottom and we only need a quarter inch on this side because that's our Pittsburgh lock. Again I'll do this in marker today. So our back side is 17 and three quarters plus our quarter inch is 18. Now I'm just putting a mark here because I have to scribe down through that cradle. Our bottom measurement is 16 and a half plus our quarter for our Pittsburgh is 16 and three quarters. So we're gonna do a quarter inch here, 90 degree bend. And we're gonna add a quarter inch again for our other Pittsburgh. So this is our 16 and a half, which is going to 20. This is our 17 and three quarters. That is going to 21 and three quarters. And we are going to bend a quarter inch here. And then this top is going to be our lock. Now we want to make our flat left. So we already have a Pittsburgh here. We've already scribed our three inch and we've already scribed our one inch along the bottom. So now we're going to 21 and three quarters plus our Pittsburgh lock, which will give us 22 and three quarters to the edge. 
and we're going to 20. Plus our Pittsburgh is 21 to the edge. Now I normally lay out with an all, but again, we're doing this a marker so you can see it. So you could put your Pittsburghs wherever you want. I try and put, put them on the longest sides that I have in the fitting. But in this case, we're changing so little, it doesn't really matter. Pittsburgh. So this is now our 21 and three quarter by 17 and three quarter. This is our 20 going to 16 and a half. This is our hem flange, hem flange. And again, this is gonna be our cradle. We'll get to that in a minute. Because this is a flat fitting on two sides, we can just measure our angles. So I already know that this is changing an inch and three quarters, and this one is changing an inch and a quarter. So if I pull out a square, and again, you don't need to do this. You can do this, you can measure the sides because you have two flat sides to work. So we're changing an inch and three quarters, and we're changing it over five. So if we take our five, and we go to an inch and three quarters, we get five and a quarter. Now, if we come over and look, we have five and a quarter. This side is going from 16 and a half to 17 and three quarters. That's changing an inch and a quarter over, over five. So if we go to five and we go to an inch and a quarter, it's only changing about an eighth. So that's five and an eighth. So five and a quarter plus three, eight and a quarter, nine and a quarter. So my next piece needs to be nine and a quarter. This one needs to be nine. I should have wrote that over there, but it's there. It's always good practice to write on the metal so that you know what you're doing. If you're making multiple fittings, you will forget things. Now we're gonna start with the first side we did, which was nine and an eighth. And because we already have a quarter inch here, we have to put a Pittsburgh on that side. So looking at our left side, We'll put our Pittsburgh there. We'll scribe one inch along the bottom, grab three inches along the top. Scribe three over here. We're now making this side from here. So here's our Pittsburghs. We are going to 21 and three quarters because our Pittsburgh is here. We want 22 and three quarters to the edge. We are going to 20. 21 to the edge with the Pittsburgh. Now I am gonna put another Pittsburgh on this side. And then when we put this side on, the next side will have two quarter inch allowances on it to pick up the Pittsburghs. Again, you can put your Pittsburghs on any side that you want. Try and pick the longest side. That makes your life a little easier. Sometimes do it on the side that has the least angle also. Now when you make your notches, I don't like to make them less than 90 into here. I don't like to have that binding up into my flange. Here it doesn't matter if it's open wider. It's, so, it's okay to put a little angle on them, especially when you have things folding in and out. So again, now we have a Pittsburgh and we are mirroring this side. So again, this is 21 and three quarters by 17 and three quarters, going to 16 and a half by 20. This is our hem flange. This is gonna be our cradle. And the other thing you could do is you can, if you're working with multiple people, we could say this is A, this is A, this is B, this is B. And then we can do C or D or whatever we want to do. But it helps people to identify when they're bending things in the brake, which side goes with what. So now we're going to mirror this side for over here. And again, we're doing quarter inch because we have to go into our lock. 
I already scribed the three. Scribe my hand flange. So we're going 17 and three quarters plus our quarter gives us 18 to the edge. Now we're going to 16 and a half plus our quarter, which gives us 16 and a half to the edge. And we will add our quarter back on. You can add it in if you want. I could have made this 17, but I'm trying to show you that when you have crazy angles, add them in after because you'll lose them as the fitting grows. Your fitting won't be long enough. It'll get eaten up in the angle. So again, now we're over here and we are 17 and three quarters by 21 three quarters, 16 and a half by 20. Hem flange, this will be our cradle. We're gonna go over that now. Quarter, quarter. So as we were marking these before, see over here, and who cares? You can call this X if you want. Does you want to scribe an inch? An inch. Scribe an inch on the outside of each fittest. And then you're going to make a 45 degree cut. Zombie sand off Now our next mark is gonna be at two on the inside. So you got a line at one inch, and a line at two inch, and this is your three inch. So one inch on the outside, two inch on the inside, and three inch. Now those are just marks for us to bend. I'm gonna run these through the Pittsburgh and then we'll go over to the break. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna start with our two flat sides. We'll do our hem flan first. 90 degrees, half inch up. Now our leaf to our break is a half inch. So we can make one inch and half inch bends without having to scribe things. 90 degrees. Now for our cradle. And the reason we marked this on the outside is that's gonna be our first bend. So we're gonna go 90 degrees. We're gonna to go to our two inch line, our second line that was on the inside. And we're gonna go all the way over. And we're gonna crush it. And that's going to be the shelf for our coil. Now, what I failed to mention was you have to leave one of these sides cut for your drain to come out on. So figure out what side your coil's on and leave that side open. Again, a repeat of the first piece. Half inch in. All the way over. Crush. Half inch up and out, 90 degrees. One inch on the outside, 90 degrees out. Into our two inch line, all the way over. Crush. I had to do this one on the other side of the break. So this is why we cut that 45 in there. One, so the corners go together nice and so that we don't have to manipulate it too much with the break. 
This is gonna be the side that my coil comes out, half inch in. It's just a repeat of every other side. But now we're gonna throw a little twist in here. Ninety degrees up. Now, because this is our angled side, we're going to go a little over ninety. Do our corner. Again, I got to do the other quarter at the other side of the brake. So now this is the side that our coil will go in and rest on this plate. Now again, this is our last side, but we're also gonna have to kick this in a bit, a bit because this side's changing. Half inch out, up and over. And you can work from whatever side of the brake you want. I'm just more comfortable on this side. I'm going to do a little overbend here. Now, you want to give this a little kick because this side is changing a little bit. And we don't want our shelf to be up on an angle. So, 90 degrees out. And all the way over. Crush it. And now we'll go put it together. Okay, so now we have our fitting all laid out and bent up. We'll put it together. Oh. I'm only putting it together like this because the camera won't see it. So that's our fitting. Our coil will slide right in this slot now. Our drains will come out. And one thing I failed to mention was I try and bring my coils out of the back side of the furnace now. A lot of times your intake and vent end up in the way. So I've actually been reversing my coils to come out of the back of the unit now where possible. If I can do it, a lot of times you're closer to the outside of the house that way anyways. But that's the way we've been doing it when we're mismatching equipment. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.